Hey, what's up everybody? It's CrossCurrent. Today I'm talking about some more Barony. I'm going to be giving a guide on the Wizard class. Now, just so you guys know, if you watch this video through and through, please drop me a subscription. I could really use that, trying to hit that 1,000 subscriber mark. Also, if you like this video, please drop a like. If you disliked it, instead of dropping a dislike, first ask me what I can do to improve the video, or just tell me. That works too. Also, just if there's something you want to see, comment below. If there's something I missed, comment below. If there is something you think I might be incorrect about, you know it, comment below. I'd appreciate it a lot if you guys did that instead of dropping those dislikes without a reason behind it. Also, if you know a friend who also wants to learn how to play as the wizard, send them this video. Why not? I love it if you guys share stuff around. Now, let's dive right into this. Wizard class. Starting off, if you are looking to play as the wizard, I would suggest using certain races. Now, if you guys are not DLC, simple answer, choose human. Otherwise, though, skeleton is not a good idea to play as a wizard because although the skeleton DLC class is a conjurer, it takes a long time for the skeleton to regain mana. Now, as a vampire, there is a funny glitch where you can just spam the levitation ability all the time. Just hit a lot of levels in a short period of time. It's very good. Also, you start off with a bloodletting ability as well as possibly other abilities as well. The succubus and incubus are what I suggest because they, they have a lot of different abilities that can be used. I'll go into the specific abilities in another video based around the DLC classes. But long story short, if you're going to go as a wizard, I would suggest playing either Vampire, Succubus, Incubus, or Insectoid because of the starting spells that they have and the ability to regain mana rather fast. Don't play as a goblin because they can't read, so you won't be able to learn the spells. You have to switch from book to book all the time. Really a bad idea. It kind of takes away the point of having a high magic level. Alright, so let's pick a human. Male and female, I don't believe it makes enough of a difference in this scenario. Wizard, whatever. I'm sure. In the play. Alright, so when you start off as a wizard, this is your inventory. You get three spell books, one of fireball, light, and cold. You get a potion of score magic. Excellent magic staff of light. Cloak protection. Claw same of Magic Reflection, which Magic Reflection is amazing. Not going to use it very much at all on the first five levels of the game. But afterwards, there are goblins with fire staffs. There are enemies that then, insectoids in particular, that use poison. Lots of stuff that can hit you with magic, especially the boss Baron Herx on level 20. Uh, leather boots plus one armor. And uh, these two things do not offer anything at all to the character. It's just weight that you don't need. I remove those. Quarterstaff, you'll have it, but down the road, it really won't make much of a difference. All right, so when you have these books, for those who don't know, you just right-click on them, so then you get those three spells. You don't really need to hold the books unless you find a lucky salesman. I personally just drop them because it's extra weight, and you're a weak class without a lot of health. Now, to equip a spell, you have to right-click on it to prepare it, and then you have to press F to actually use it. Now, if you have a spell book and you're casting it from there, you're going to have to wield it. Like, let's say you can't learn the magic spell because your magic is too low. You shouldn't have that problem. But right-click on it, hold down to wield or unwield, and then you press spacebar, and it'll fire it. Unfortunately, the wizard is very adept in magic, so whatever it is, it shouldn't be too big of a problem. Now, if you have a lot of time to play the game, I would suggest either right now or down the road, you just spam all your spells. But the best time to do that is when you're on levels uh, 6 through 10, because then you can spam out all your spells, jump in the water while you're praising like gems or something like that, leave for a while, come back and do it again. So then you're constantly leveling up your swimming, your appraisal, and your mana. Kind of cheap, kind of slow, well actually really slow, but 
if you're looking for a win and you're looking to see all the extensive spells, that's a way to go about it. Whoa. You have to resustain the light every level. Uh, cold will slow enemies as well. So keep that in mind. Fireball is a great damage dealing ability though. And if you are going to use the Potion Restore Magic, you're probably going to use it early on in the game because you just don't replenish mana fast enough and you're looking to hit those levels. And unfortunately, since the Skeletons are not one tap, you probably will be. Okay, when it comes to statistics, I'm just going to go and make sure that there's nothing I'm missing. You start with level 50 casting, level 50 magic. Uh, pole arm proficiency, you have 20, level 25. And alchemy is at level 10. Alchemy you won't use a whole lot, but it's still an option. So, okay, whatever. No more levels. For the most part, you can get a pretty good uh, backstab effect with the quarter staff, though. You just got to make sure the enemy is completely turned away, and after doing the powerful strike, switch to a quick side strike. It also depends on their health, though, and how much armor they have. you're going slower be sure to praise everything that you possibly can it will be very handy for you equip armor equip whatever you can you're not there to be very quick you're also not there to be very tanky so you gotta work around with stuff all right guys for those of you who did not know when you pick up a magic staff and it is cursed you might as well just use it up until it breaks to level up both your casting and your magic level so you can learn new spells. Now to learn new spells you need to level up your magic level to cast with better proficiency and get better mana regen as well as being able to eventually hit legendary and cast force bolt for zero mana. You're going to have to work on casting. So right there I got two levels of each for free using a Cursed Magic Staff. Now if you do pick up a Cursed Magic Staff you will want to use that as quick as possible because otherwise you can't switch out of it. It is still a cursed weapon but since it's broken it falls off. I would also do this with Magic Staffs of Locking because Locking is really a spell that almost never gets utilized to the best of its ability. It could be good but that's basically just a stalling mechanic and it backfires. Opening, I would always save those staffs if you have no other way to cast opening. So then you can open chests, lock doors, gates, etc. It's a lot better than lock picking, believe me. For those who do not know, to level up alchemy, you have to either mix potions, experiment, or you have to drink potions. So, like, let's say I want to drink this booze. Boom! Alchemy is improved. I learned about the bottle of booze base alchemy ingredient. So, that's how you increase alchemy. Uh, if you want a class that is completely based on alchemy, you will want to play as the Brewer is a DLC class affiliated with the Goatman. But that is how you would work on alchemy since you do get at least 10 levels of that as a wizard. From what I have noticed in the game, the only times magic staffs like this pop up are when they are magic missile or if they are Charm Monster Magic Missile, it's a very powerful missile you shoot an enemy. Not too surprising. Charm Monster though, you use it on an enemy and it charms them to be on your side. This seems to be indefinite and also seems to be based a little bit on your charisma. I'm not sure how much of an effect that has, but that's what devs told me. And it's a very hard spell to find on a staff. Now, uh, you cannot actually learn the Charm Monster spell, but you can learn a spell called Dominate when you get magic up to level 100. If you cast that and you don't have enough mana, it will remove from your health 
and to actually dominate the enemy it costs equal to their health be really careful when using this the achievement of dominating three crystal gold at once is actually really challenging because they have so much health be careful friends I did forget to mention this about alchemy if you are using it you're going up to a fountain be sure to equip an empty bottle and use it on the fountain because unlike the past where you can get blinded confused or other madness this will give you a potion also it can still summon a succubus so hey more experience right just gotta be careful about being charmed or your units getting charmed by it alrighty for those of you who are trying to get just water you just go up to one of these pipes and use it a bunch of times you would also get some slimes to pop up but uh yeah so there oh you can also possibly get acid sorry about that chat now with potions of acid be careful while mixing that i every time i have tried to mix acid with something else it seems to explode and it set me on fire but if you get really lucky i believe that mixes with something to make a firestorm potion i have a clip of that somewhere and it is very powerful it completely destroys even minotaurs really quickly now for those of you who have not had the opportunity to see an alembic and potions at work to brew you can only brew what you actually know which unfortunately is just water and booze water if you mix it with anything it'll typically dilute it to water or it'll do absolutely nothing booze you can get that but it's still not something you really need unless you're a goat man uh, so to experiment that's a great way to level up before you have a high enough alchemy level I will mix I don't know don't want to mix with mix with acid so I'll put paralysis and fruit juice together and see what I get plain purple potion it gave me a potion of sickness you're gonna see sickness and confusion a lot when you're experimenting for whatever reason that those are some of the easiest stuff to make when you read a spell book and learn a spell, you do get magic levels, potentially. So, just be sure that if you're picking up a book, even if it's a spell you don't want, like let's say light or slow, or opening, for whatever reason opening, I don't know why someone will want that. Be sure you're using it. It helps out a lot down the road. With opening, in case you do not have the magic level to learn it, even if you're not a wizard, I suggest wielding it and using it whenever you need it. It's basically like having a staff of opening, but not as good. Also, be sure not to... I don't know how wielding would work with this, but do not actually read or try to learn from a spellbook that is cursed. It will instead remove a spell that you already learned. Alright guys, so one of the last things I have to tell you is that make sure your hot bar looks about like this. You have your melee weapon, or something that doesn't require magic. <clears throat> your spells, typically two to three that will deal damage. One that can help utilize the combat. One that is for very specific scenarios, such as opening when the doors are locked and you need to get out quickly. Also handy if you have a locked chest. Teleportation. This is good in a pinch. Magic re reflection amulet. I have that just in case I see a guy with a staff. I can switch to it quickly. Crossbow in case I need range and I don't have the mana for it. And a potion of healing or a potion of restore magic just depending upon what you're more, most going to use. Alright guys, so another tip that I have that I did not see in the game there is if you find a shopkeeper that has spell books, this is the way I suggest going about it. Buy the spell books that you need to learn from, click on them to learn from them, and then resell them back to them. It'll be a little bit less because each time you learn a spell from a book, it deteriorates it, but it doesn't take off too huge of a price. You do this with staffs, it's a little bit cheaper than books for the most part, but 
returning it to the shopkeeper broken will give you little to nothing, and you won't learn any spells from it. Now, I was hoping I could have made a guide about all these spells in the game, but instead I'm going to make a separate video about all of these and put it in a ranking system on my personal favorites and why. So if you guys are interested in that, be sure to stay tuned and drop a sub to see that in the future. But what I will talk about, guys, is if you find these types of books, there are six books that you should hold on to even if you can't use them yet, spellbook-wise, and five of them that are somewhat helpful as well, but more situational. The first one is Dig. The reason why you want to hold on to this is because you can break down the walls to get into most of the special floors, especially on levels 11 through well, levels 10 through 14, because they're completely walled off. Also, if a boulder is coming to you, you can destroy it with Dig. There's lots of options, including traps on the walls. You can break those with the Dig spell as well. It will still cost a lot to use it, but it is super duper crucial to getting all the stuff you need to get through the dungeons and have the supplies you can really use. Remove Curse is the next one. I hold on to that because a lot of the stuff that's really amazing in the game always tends to be cursed. Let's take, for example, the Mirror Shield. It can reflect spells right back at the enemy just by blocking. Really helpful, but almost always cursed because a demon's holding it. You have the Remove Curse book. It's great for that. It works for cursed spell books, for any item. You might as well hold on to it because there's going to be something you want that's going to be cursed in the Barony world. Detect food. Now this kind of depends on your gameplay and what you're struggling with. I hold on to it just because if you're playing with hunger, you're going to need it or you're going to take some damage constantly. If you're playing a cursed, I'm not entirely sure if that will work and show blood. But maybe if you got in a pinch, you could polymorph, eat some food and then go back to the accursed vampire. I do know if you're playing where you just heal 5 HP, it's great because then you have a map to know where all the healing could possibly be. As a, as a mage, you shouldn't have to worry about that as much with certain spells. Magic mapping, this is such an important spell. People forget about it, but that's because aside from four levels, it's not essential. It's always nice, especially for a speedrun, you're always going to want to find a magic mapping book, scroll, whatever. Because seeing the map, knowing where the exit is, and possibly if there's a bonus exit, saves you a lot of time and trouble. Levitation, that will take you to bonus levels in the levels of 16 to 19. On those levels, you will find... That there are some places that can only be gotten to via levitating. So that's really helpful. Also, if you're in a fight and you need to kind of escape, levitation is great for that. It will sustain and remove. It will remove your mana over time if you are levitating, though. Sustaining that will reduce that. All right. Extra healing is amazing. It costs about 40 mana, I believe. and it heals you a lot. The reason why I suggest this as a book as opposed to the other healing is because using a spell book tends to take longer than casting a spell and this has to deteriorate much quicker. You're going to want to actually get the bang for your buck as opposed to getting a lot less health and having the book get destroyed. Now we move on to the less helpful and more situational spell books to hold on to. Opening. Now, if you're a mage, I don't see any reason as to why you'd be using a book of opening instead of the spell opening. Uh, by mage, I mean wizard, by the way. Um, teleportation. This is kind of a YOLO yeet kind of weapon. Uh, ability. The reason is because you have no idea where you're going. You can land on a trap. You can land in a room full of trolls, spiders, etc. Just not ideal. If you have nothing else, hold on to it. Might as well have some way to escape and recoup if you're stuck in a bad scenario. Cure, cure ailment is really good. The problem is, by the time it actually casts off from a spellbook, 
most of what was hitting you is gone. Bleeding might still be around, poison might still be around, but the burning is almost already gone, so it doesn't matter. And uh, anything else is probably from a fountain, so uh, I don't know. Maybe a charm from a succubus, but it just seems... It also costs a lot to use, so it's just not something I would use on the fly. Healing, I've discussed before, it just will not heal you enough for how quickly the book will deteriorate and how much time it takes to cast. And Polymorph, if you're playing as a DLC class, I think this is really helpful. If you're not, obviously, turn yourself from a human into a human doesn't really help. But... Having the ability to do that and always go to the shopkeepers or always be able to recruit allies or whatever the case may be as one of the DLC monster classes, that would be ideal. Alright guys, that just about does it for the video. If there's anything you think I missed or misunderstood or said wrong, please drop a comment. Please share this with your friends. Drop a like if you enjoyed it. Smash that subscribe button for me. I'd love that. And I'll see you guys next time.